Hi, my name is Mackenzie, also known as M to the Third, and this is making vlog number 12. Um, thanks for coming back, and happy October. October is for sure my favorite month, not only because it's my birthday. Um, <clears throat> it's also just like the official start of knitting season, arguably. Um, maybe not so much in the Southern Hemisphere, but definitely in the Northern Hemisphere, and definitely in Boston, New England area. Um, the leaves are starting to change and it's definitely cooling off, although today is like 75 degrees and a little sweaty. It's supposed to rain later tonight, so there's like a ton of wind and definitely um, a storm kind of blowing in. Um, so the last time I recorded, I mentioned that I had started this new job and my time was really diminishing and my time has diminished more and more, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately for the vlog, but like fortunately for myself. So I am figuring out what that means for a consistent schedule and maybe it'll be at the beginning of the month. Um, yeah, that's all to be determined. So <clears throat> yeah, I do, I like fully plan on continuing to record. I'm just, I was really enjoying doing it once a week. Um, I definitely see some benefits to spacing it out further because all of these hobbies that I have are kind of slow um, progress and so having a bit of a gap in between each episode is allowing me to share more. Um, and I don't know if that's preferable or not. Um, yeah, so I'm just kind of thinking about that and we'll see how this video does. It's going to be uh, quite a bit longer just because I have quite a bit of stuff that I've been working on and um, <clears throat> yeah, we'll see how y'all like it and see how it does. Um, so, wow, I don't even know kind of where to start. <clears throat> also, this wind and the leaves on the ground are just like totally getting my fall allergies like going, um, which I <clears throat> is basically making my throat super irritated, my eyes irritated, and so hopefully getting back on my allergy med um, early spring routine will clear me up soon. But I got a cup of tea here and some water, so hopefully I'll get through this recording without <clears throat> losing it. <laughs> I started working on this together shawl. And it, we're making making some progress. Um, I'm almost done with the first ball. I have four of these, and they're 50 gram skeins of BC Yarns uh, Bio Shetland. It's really nice, woolly. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to like show you this. Uh, come on, camera. You could do it. <clears throat> This is when you know you're a real knitting podcaster. Come on, focus. There we go. Yeah, so like very wooly, very thin. I would say it's a light uh, fingering. And it, there's like definitely hints of like kind of green undertones. When I first picked it up, I just thought it was like completely natural, but there's some green hues, which I'm definitely not mad about. And yeah, it's definitely starting to take longer per row as any good shawl does um, but I'm really enjoying the way that the bobbles are written and just like excited to have another triangle shawl because I'm just finding that that's what I um, use most often um, <clears throat> yeah so that's just kind of like my watching TV knitting at lunch all of those um, things so that's one work in progress. The other one, this is distracting me. <laughs> the other one is gonna be for Kay's Christmas present. Um, I actually was going to hide it from them, but they <laughs> came home and I, the dog was barking and it just happened. So this is something we planned out last year that I didn't um, get around to knitting, which is just kind of how it happens. So, what they wanted was these Bristol Ivy Resistance mitts that um, is a pattern that she created for the Women's March. So, um, but 
there were some modifications requested, uh, one of which is that instead of, I don't remember what the actual gloves, the mittens say on the top of it, but there's some sort of protest saying about resistance and there's like the little Venus symbol. Um, but for K, we were talking about what <clears throat> we would prefer it to say and we decided um, on a very popular like unionization, workers' rights, protest song um, from Latin America. And so it says, El Pueblo Unido Jamás Será Vencido, which is the people united will never be defeated. And the background, as you can see, is a pride flag, the Philly pride flag specifically, which also includes black and brown stripes. So <laughs> I bought this yarn last year and I could find rainbow yarn, um, but I couldn't find Philly pride yarn. I think if I looked on Etsy now, I probably would be able to find it. But, you know, I didn't, I knew that it would be hand dyed. I knew it would be probably cost a lot of money because that like totally understandably it's it's a complicated process to hand dye self-striping yarn um, so what I did was I got this rainbow color is Knit Picks Felici Felici and then I got in the same like stroll I think that's also Knit Picks it, I got a black and a brown but this they're very close in color and I didn't quite realize um, <clears throat> how pastel the Felici would end up looking. Um, so there are some spots where it's like hard to read. I mean, you can see it for sure, but you know. So, <clears throat> I mean, I'm happy with it. Kay is happy with it in like hindsight 2020. I'll knit the other one the same way. Um, I might mix up the stripes a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but... Yeah, so that's like one one mitten down and it's pretty cool because you wear them and then if you're at a protest, you can, you know, have your little fist up even though you're wearing mittens. <clears throat> so that actually didn't take me very long to actually to do. I was like procrastinating because I was like it's going to take me forever. But the color work is really fun. Um, I completely redid the back of the chart so that I could fit um, my phrase onto it. So, yeah, that the next one is um, not cast on yet, but all the yarn is out, and I'll probably get to it pretty quick. <clears throat> um, so that's my other work in progress. Um, these were done, and now they are a work in progress again. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. So... <clears throat> Uh, when I first moved to Boston, I brought some yarn with me and I was really feeling quite homesick. And <clears throat> so, God, sorry, this is irritating. I'm clearing my throat. Okay, so I decided to make a pair of socks with little houses on it. Um, so these I knit, God, like four years ago. Yeah, they just have those little houses. Um, the blue color, that teal, is from some leftover knitted wit that I had. And then the main color and this like bit of purple here are both verb yarns. And I think they're both their, their now retired superwash base called Creating. Um, I think one Adrian dyed with mushrooms and the other one is just a colorway that they either still have or used to have. Um, so yeah, I just kind of like made up this pattern because I was feeling homesick and trying to just settle into Boston. Um, for So in the toe on one of them, I noticed that there was a drop stitch, um, <clears throat> but it had kind of like as much as Superwash can felted itself. but the last couple of times I washed it, it totally like opened up. So I did a somewhat decent attempt at darning the little uh, 
hole in the toe. And so I've been wearing them and it's kind of like felted back together. So I've been like, oh, yay, great. They're like gonna hold up for a while longer. And then I just pulled them off the drying rack and there is another hole in the heel. So they were finished. They were my finished object and now they are works in progress again. And I'll just have to um, darn that little hole. It's good practice um, for darning. I've been really trying to be conscious of <clears throat> what I've been buying and you know just making sure all of my socks are have many days and wears ahead of them so that's next um yeah i think everything else is finished so let me talk to you very briefly about um some dyeing that i've been doing so some of you may know some of you may not know that i run a little natural dyeing uh naturally dyed yarn business and mostly I've been selling a marled fingering weight called mezcla which is uh, like a translation to kind of mixed um, and I've been really wanting to branch out beyond just mezcla and I have a little bit but um, one of my big dreams has been to work with a mill to custom spin some yarn for me and so I just recently received a hundred skeins of yarn that was processed for me from a lovely mill in uh, upstate New York. So I've been experimenting with that and I dyed my first couple of skeins with some marigolds that were in part from my garden and in part from a friend's garden that I had dried out and I did a little tutorial on it. I think I am gonna include it in this video. I'm going to show you today one way to dye, naturally dye yarn with marigolds. So this is a collection of marigolds from a garden, a friend of mine's garden, as well as my own growing over the summer. And I've laid them out to dry. You can use fresh marigolds. I find that I'm not always immediately ready to dye. and. If I let them dry, I have the opportunity to collect more of them to get more of a bath, a dye bath, um, before jumping into dyeing. So what you're gonna need is a pot that is specifically for natural dyeing. You don't wanna be using cookware that you cook in to eat out of. And you're gonna want a collection of marigolds. I have dried marigolds. Again, you could also use fresh marigolds. And I have some wool here, some wool yarn that is pre-mordanted. So the method that I'm gonna do today is gonna give kind of a speckle effect um, on yarn. It's not gonna be anything like the really defined speckles that you're gonna get on superwash wool with acid dyes. That's just not a real possibility with the yarn that I'm using because it is not super washed, so it has little burrs coming off of the fiber, not burrs, but it has a halo on the fiber, and so it's that makes it really difficult to get defined speckles. And on top of that, a lot of the speckles that you see on super wash yarns are going to be made with a powder or um, with like a spray bottle and it basically saturates one little tiny piece of the fiber and leaves a mark and that's just not um, What's gonna happen? So again, the tools you're gonna need are your marigolds a Pot that is just for dyeing some mordanted wool access to water and <clears throat> some sort of stirring utensil and a heat source Okay, so the way that I'm gonna do this today, and this is not the way, again, um, everyone is going to do it, but. So I'm gonna take my pot and 
I'm gonna layer a couple of skeins into the pot with the marigolds. So let me grab one of my skeins of yarn. And you do want this yarn to be wet. It doesn't have to be sopping wet, but you want it to be damp. So I'm just gonna wring it out a little bit. Bring it over here. This yarn is gonna appear to be like a little red or like it has like a red tint, but um, that's just because the pot <laughs> that I mordanted it in was a little red. So I'm gonna kind of lay it flat on the bottom here, as flat as possible, like that. And then I'm gonna take some of these marigolds and just kind of sprinkle them about. And really why I'm doing it like this is because I want them to kind of print onto the yarn more so than um, extracting the color and then dunking the yarn into it to get an even saturation. I want these little dramatic pops of a color. Then I'm gonna take one more skein of yarn from my tangled mess. Again, I'm gonna kind of lay it flat because I really want the color to be picked up on both sides. And then I'm gonna sprinkle the rest of these marigolds about. Great. I have some petals left in there. I'm just gonna make sure I get all of those. Okay, fantastic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill it up with a very small amount of water. It's probably just gonna come up to about here. So let me go do that and bring it back to show you what it looks like. So it actually doesn't look too much different, but I basically added water to just come to cover the tops of the skeins. If I was creating a dye bath, I would want enough water in here that the skeins could move freely. But because I'm really looking for that speckled effect, I don't want these skeins to be moving around too much. So it's kind of like a low immersion dye bath in this pot. So the next step for this is I'm gonna put it on super low heat and bring it up to about 180 degrees, um, which will put off steam, but it won't be boiling. Um, you really wanna avoid boiling because it could felt the wool, especially because this isn't super wash and that's no fun to work with. So what I'm gonna be doing again is putting it over my gas burner, bringing it up to heat and then letting it um, basically just below a simmer for about an hour. So it'll be an hour and a half total, and then I'm gonna get all of these imprints of the marigolds, and the, the water will <clears throat> become a bit of a dye bath, and then we'll take a look at the product and then see if there's anything else um, I wanna do with it. So yeah, let me go do that. So this is the next day after letting the marigolds cool overnight. And I can see that it's got this really great yellow color, the yarn. Um, but what I thought would happen was that I would get sort of little imprints, almost like uh, an eco print on the wool. And it doesn't look like that happened. I'm curious to see the second layer um, so let me pick out as many of these marigolds as I can manage and then uh, we'll, we'll take a look from there. To say that I know anything as well as the back of my hand or what a lie that would be. All I've been studying are my palms with my elbows pressed against my knees. My hands, they have that slight 
tremble and my bottom lip has that slight quiver and my cheeks they are wet. Now that I'm pulling them out, I am seeing a little bit more of variation in the color um, that it pulled up in some places. So I'm gonna go run these through my spin dryer and then come back and show you what they look like a little bit drier. Okay, so I quickly ran that through my little spin cycle just so that we could take a look. Um, it's gonna lighten up uh, any natural dye as it dries, so I like to kind of get it as dry as I can before I um, rinse it. But yeah, now that I've done that, I can definitely see a little bit more of the variation in tone and it's pretty amazing that I'm getting this bright of a color from such a small amount of marigolds and I might even have enough exhaust to like throw another skein in there. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this but this yellow color is not uh, it's it's a little too pastel-y for something that I might want to wear or knit with um, it would definitely have a spot, but what I think I'm going to do is um, modify it with some iron, and that should give me a nice army green color, which I'm excited about. And it'll just make sure that the color sticks even better than it did before. So let me get that set up, and I'll um, show you what that looks like. I did also want to mention that if you don't want the difference in shades with your marigolds, you can pop them in a little bit of water. I'm gonna actually extract even more dye from this batch. And I'm gonna simmer this over the stove for about the same amount of time, probably about an hour, just to pull out as much of the color as I can. And then I will strain it through, uh, through a fine mesh strainer just to get as much of the plant matter out as possible. This is great if you don't want to spend time picking out uh, petals and other plant debris from your yarn and you just get the dye bath and then you can put your yarn in there sort of unafflicted by all of that plant stuff. So I'm gonna also do that. Okay, so here I've brought over another pot. It's slightly bigger just because that's what I have on hand. And for iron, you do want to be careful because if you add too much, it can um, start to deteriorate the wool. So really probably one to 5% is plenty um, in, is plenty in regards to the weight of fiber that you're dyeing. Since I have two 100 gram skeins here, I'm probably just gonna do about 2% um, of iron. So I'm gonna fill this up with uh, lukewarm water. I'm gonna measure out my iron and I'm gonna add it to it, dissolve it, and then I'll stick my yarn in. So I'm using this iron powder um, here. You can also definitely get iron um, in little pill capsules from the store as a supplement and use that. Um, you can also keep any rusty uh, nails or anything else like rusty that you find in a jar with water and add that to a dye bath. Basically, it'll turn into kind of a rusty, watery solution and that will also act as uh, the same as this. I'm gonna actually put this over some heat, um, very, very light heat, and keep an eye on it, and I'll check back in. So this is after um, a little bit of time on heat in the iron bath. You can see that the color gets a little muddy, but I've got this great kind of greeny 
olive -y color, which I will personally find much more use for than I would that yellow. And it's a little more unique of a color. So yeah, that's kind of what happened. And I'll go ahead and rinse this because you do need to rinse it as soon as possible when it's coming out of an iron bath because it can make the fibers weak. The iron sort of corrodes wool. So you don't want to leave it in there for too long. But yeah, that's it. And I'll, I'm excited to show you some videos of the yarn all dried up. Position is pathetic and cliche, I know, I know. But I am stuck in this place, and I am so in this place. Oh, I am stuck in this place. So I am stuck in this place. This is what this marigold yarn turned out like. I really like it. Um, I kind of, and you'll, yeah, so I sort of sprinkled them without to get these big variations in color. And then at the end, I um, put it in an iron bath to sort of, it sort of says it's muddling the color, but I would say it's, it's just bringing out these like really awesome, like olive tones. Yeah, so I did two skeins. And this is going to be in a new DK base that is Merino and Romney, and it's two ply. So you get those. Oh, it's just such a good yarn. And I was really curious to see how much it would inflate and puff up after being washed. So this is what it looks like before it's scoured and washed all of those oils out and mordanted and then this is what it looks like after. So there's like quite a big difference in just like, see how much bigger this one is? And I think that's just so like fascinating and lovely. So I'm, <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna do a whole video, maybe even a series about just this process of getting the yarn spun, but also coming up with like the palette and how I've been testing them. I also, like this yarn would be part of um, a series, I guess, of like a special sub-series of colorways that are all foraged materials from the Boston area. So I've been doing a lot of foraging. Right now is a great time uh, for foraging and so I've been kind of working on that but all of those things are coming up, but I just thought it'd be fun to kind of share that I'm working on it and um, for you to get excited about what's coming. Um, I also wanted to really quick share this yarn. Oh, it's attached to something. So these are both dyed with marigolds. This is something I did several years ago with marigolds that were growing on my um, deck and this so you can see it's pretty pretty color fast um, and just like what the iron does to the skein yeah isn't that cool Ooh. okay so I have a couple um, finished objects that I'm excited about uh, so this is a sweater that I knit for my dog maple a couple years ago and it's with some hand spun very classic dog shape but it definitely stretched out um, I held it double with some Quince and Co chickadee and a hand spun that I did so I knit it on like size 10 10 and a half needles and it just stretched out because she wears it and runs around in it and it gets a little wet during the winter um, but she is a pretty uh, decently small dog so she does get cold um, so yeah, this was just a little too wide and this was really like kind of a practice. I also didn't knit or make this hole for her harness um, as far back as it needed to be. So it just was like saggy and not super cute anymore. Um, so I wanted to knit another one for her following a very similar pattern. 
and this is the one I ended up making. This yarn is from Sincere Sheep. I just made, it's a, a worsted, so I used a much smaller needle. I started off with a slightly smaller neck and did some more increases for the chest and also put the hole for the harness further back. So right now it's pretty taut on her and I think if it stretches out I can just give it another wash. And I added short rows so that it comes, so it sort of stops where her legs are and then goes back down her back. Yeah, so that, I whipped that up in a couple of days. Um, I love this yarn. Brooke's yarn is amazing. Um, I feel lucky to know Brooke and <clears throat> uh, call her a mentor of mine. I don't know if she would see me as a mentee, but I consider her a mentor. So yeah, it has some indigo, I think some, it's either matter or cochineal, maybe cochineal, but yeah. And Maple loves it. I'll include a couple pictures here of her begrudgingly uh, modeling for me. She actually really likes wearing sweaters. When we adopted her, she came with like a wardrobe from her previous family. And when I uh, hold up the sweater for her to get dressed, she'll kind of like close her eyes and put her ears back um, so you can slip it over her head. She's so, she's such a great dog. Um, okay. <coughs> so I do want to share some sewing. Unfortunately, while I was making this, my show sewing machine kind of like, I don't know, the machine locked. I'm trying to figure out how the hell to manage it, but my internet searches have not been um, very fruitful and like inspiring optimism about how much it will uh, be helped. But I wanted to just make some new... Uh, pillow covers for our couch and I made this little that's the front and that's the back and I was gonna make two more but then my machine just stopped working so I just wanted to make some patchworky ones I was gonna make one that had half and half on the diagonal um, but yeah that turned out pretty cute I was you know I'm doing as best as I can <laughs> Um, but yeah, I just wanted some more like folly things. Our theme for our living room has always been kind of emerald green and orange and light pinks. So that's where all of those fabrics came from. Um, yeah, I just finished that. Thought I would share. And the last thing that I'm really excited to share with you. Um, so last video I talked about, um, <coughs> so last video I showed you some yarn that was sent to me from Amy um, who uh, runs Knit Collage. It's, their yarn is so fun, it's super chunky, um, it's all hand spun in India by a team of women that are fabulous that she has trained and works with. and. I've, all, I've worked in stores that have carried her yarn. I think they're fabulous. They're super unique and it's, you know, it's pricey. And so one of the things that her and I have talked about is that she wants to extend the size range available for a lot of her patterns so that more people can participate in the knit along. That being said, the yarn can be pricey. So she wanted to make sure that, you know, everyone was only getting as many as they need. Um, so, they're, they were test testing out the pattern that is going to be one of the options for their fall knit along and they sent me the yarn and I test knit it and I love how it turned out. It is so fun um, <clears throat> and I'll include some video of it but look at this. This is just the yoke. It's called the pixelated cardigan. And so I'll include some video here of me wearing it. So super, I mean, I had a blast knitting it. It knits up fairly quick, even for a whole sweater, because it's it's such thick yarn. Um, I, of course, love these colors, right? Light pink and yellow. 
what more could I ask for? And I did do some adjustments. Um, instead of cropping it and not doing any bust increases or waist increases, I wanted it to go a little bit past my like the biggest part of my waist so on the edges I just added um, I think I ended up adding three inches which is only six stitches because the gauge is so thick because the yarn is so thick so just like when I got to a point where my hips were starting to um, get bigger and I could see that it was like sort of stretching over them I added a stitch at either side marker and that was basically the only um, adjustment I made and I detailed all of that on my Ravelry which will be linked below um, but yeah I just had such a fun time knitting this such a fun time working with um, the designer of the pattern uh, to talk about you know the complications of basically grading up and making it work for all sorts of bodies and I think it's gonna be such a fun knit along. Amy does a fantastic job of guiding people through it, offers a lot of support, and of course you get a beautiful garment when it's done. I will also put a link down below for um, all the sign up information for the knit along, uh, which opens uh, on Thursday, October 10th, which is probably the day that this is going to be going live. So head on over there if you want to participate and join along. Um, Amy just fosters such a wonderful community and I feel very lucky to call her a friend. Um, yeah, so definitely head over and check that out. And let's, yeah. So over the weekend, my knitting group and I spent all day Saturday participating in the Greater Boston Yarn Crawl, which is super fun. Um, basically, we just head out uh, from Boston. <laughs> we started off in Natick at the Fabric Place basement, got lunch, um, <coughs> Jesus. got lunch, headed to uh, the Black Sheep Knitting Company in Needham, who had a, an indie dyer doing a trunk show. And then we made our way up to Cambridge and went to Gather Here and Mind's Eye. And yeah, it was just, it was a ton of fun just spending the day with knitters. And we ended in Porter Square, which is in Cambridge. And they have a cute little bookshop where you can grab coffee and yeah it was just like so nice and you know just to support the local yarn stores um just kind of see what the different stores have and yeah it was just like a lot of fun um i <clears throat> was be very intentional about not spending uh too much money because i am going to rhinebeck in a few weeks and I'm also just trying to be very conscious about what I'm buying. I don't have a huge stash. Um, <coughs> I feel like I have a very manageable amount of yarn. And, you know, a lot of it is for specific projects. And I've been knitting a lot for my business lately. And, yeah, i just really trying to be conscious. I don't feel overwhelmed and... Yeah, it's just like just been interesting to kind of reflect on what that looks like for different people and uh, yeah just be grateful for what I have and the fact that I can knit um, and you know have that as a as an outlet for creativity and etc etc so yeah if I yeah I just wanted to kind of mention that I had a great time with my knitting buds and uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I will be at Ryan Beck in a couple of weeks, and I would love if you came up and said hi if you are also going to be there. Um, <clears throat> I've been thinking a lot about sharing haul videos. Um, Crimson Stitchery, if you haven't already checked out her podcast, definitely do so. Um, Anushka is very 
smart and reflective and I just really appreciate um, the topics that she decides to cover within the context of her knitting podcast. And she did a video on haul videos and it's something I have thought about myself and I appreciate that, you know, she's being open about it and that people are being receptive to, um, I mean, really the ways that it alienates certain people from the knitting community. And yeah, it's just similarly encouraging me to think about uh, what I think what it is is that it makes people who don't have access to the highest quality yarns feel part of the knitting community and that's never something I want to perpetuate especially as someone who um, largely has had access to these yarns because I've worked at the store and gotten employee discounts or have been gifted yarn from co-workers uh, etc etc so yeah I've just been really thinking about you know what that looks like for different people uh, what kind of vibe I guess you could say um, I'm perpetuating on my channel and <clears throat> yeah I don't really feel like coming in every week and being like this is what I bought which is also not the reality for me um, yeah I just I'm thinking about that. I think it's much more fun to share with you different different natural dye experiments. Um, I think people are more interested in that. And if you have any ideas for content that you would like to see me do, um, any questions you have about natural dyeing, uh, any knitting techniques, I've done a lot of them and I would love to you know do more tutorial videos so please leave it in the comments I really love hearing from you oh my god <laughs> the wind is out of control okay I think I think it's okay yeah I just really want to encourage more of a conversation happening on this channel and yeah just like building a community because you know I've yeah, I've just been feeling very grateful for my in-person community of knitting and feel like this channel is a way for me to extend that into the internet world. And I want to hear from you. I want to hear what you want and yeah, what that looks like. <clears throat> so yeah, I think that is it for me for this week. Thanks for being patient as I... Uh, figure out my new schedule and yeah I really hope you have a great day if you like this video please subscribe down below um, if you like this video please hit that like button it really helps me out and if you haven't already please subscribe um, so that you can get updates about when I upload especially because it's not as consistent as it was that also really helps me out so um, yeah I really Really appreciate you joining me and I'll see you soon.